I'm crying and I'm like, as I'm speaking in tongues, I'm telling God, I'm like, God, on the cross, you took all of our sicknesses, you took all of our illnesses, all of our, including our trauma, like the wound that I feel in my heart from my past and from resentment or whatever it is, bitterness, like I know that you too on the cross took all of our illnesses and transgressions, that being one of them, emotional illnesses, whatever it is, like I gave it to you, right? This trauma, this wound that I have, I know you can heal it. So I started speaking in tongues and telling that to God. As I'm telling that to God, I felt in my spirit that God was telling me and I, like it wasn't an audible voice, but I just felt in my heart, like I was receiving peace. I was receiving healing. I just felt like God was telling me everything you feel, all the condemnation, all the shame, all the stuff that's stopping you from doing what God is telling you to do, ministry, YouTube, all that, today it ends today it's brought to like the grave like it's it's done like it's finished literally as this is happening pastor of my church takes the mic from the worshiper or gets another mic i don't know my eyes were closed and he just starts praying like you are healed like god heals you in this moment god heals you and i received it i received it bro I received the healing and in that moment I just had to believe like I'm healed like everything I had in my heart all the residue from my past like that's it hi guys welcome back to my channel as you can see I have a different setup than I usually do it's a setup from one of my like OG type of YouTube videos that I started creating at the beginning of my channel and if you hear any like honking and people outside it's literally because I'm by my window so today as you can see from the title of this video what I'm gonna do today is just share with you guys my healing testimony from a lot of bitterness and resentment that I had in my heart that I was completely unaware of and different things and traumas that I had gone through from being in the church that I was in when I was little which ended up being a cult and from just like things that happen that you kind of just don't let go of and they do affect your life and your spiritual journey of course that being said, I'm gonna pray before I share this testimony because there's a lot to be said or that can be said but I want it to be intentional and I want the Holy Spirit to guide my words. I don't want it to be just simply me talking and sharing my information online. I really want to make this video to encourage and to bring people closer to Jesus and knowing that he's our only true healer. So let's pray so God can guide me in Jesus name. Father, I ask in this moment God that every word that comes out of my mouth God may be led by your Holy Spirit. That your Holy Spirit fill me in this moment. That you speak through me oh Jesus and that this testimony God can reach whoever needs to hear it whoever might be going through some trauma that they haven't addressed going through some resentment some bitterness some issues with family members God I pray God that you heal them in this moment Jesus Christ and even if you don't you don't completely heal them God now God that after watching this video they may continue to seek you Lord for healing seek the help that they need Lord to let go of the things that they have just built up in their heart God guide me guide whoever is watching to just get closer to you Jesus in Jesus name we pray amen without further ado let me just get right into it it's very vulnerable what i'm gonna share so it's not the most comfortable thing to do but this channel is to glorify jesus and if i feel in my heart that god is telling me share this even if it means i'm gonna have to share things that don't make me look good i want god to be glorified and showing the transformational power of jesus is being able to admit where we fall short so that god can be glorified not to say that i'm just sharing this and saying that it's okay what i'm gonna share like in the bad attitudes that i've had but sharing and saying that God is transforming all of us that none of us are perfect and we will continue to be transformed by him so if you're new to this channel i grew up in a church that turned out to be a cult i have a video all about that right here and it's been nine years about to be 10 years since we left that church me and my mom and we left in a way that was very traumatic for me particularly because being that it was a cult it was a church that completely wrapped your entire life in the church it was very controlling manipulative and distorting the word of god even though it was all those things for me growing up there it was all that i knew it was where all my friends were people that kind Kind of became like family to me and my life was just consumed by this place when we left it wasn't that i left willingly i left unwillingly because my mom had noticed certain things that were going on there that weren't good out of obedience i had to just leave along with her for me it was really difficult because this church made me believe that in order for me to like be in the kingdom of god i needed to be a part of this church and that there were certain regulations that i needed to follow and it just painted a picture of god that wasn't jesus they use the word of god to instill fear in the people that were part of this church and to make you feel peer pressured in a way to stay there and withstand 
any type of emotional abuse or strict legalistic rules um for example one of the rules was like you can't really have pets i never had pets so that was an issue for me but if you came late to church they wouldn't let you inside of church and just imagine me coming late to church with my mom one day on a sunday after taking 45 minutes to go to church coming to the door and somebody telling you no you can't come in because you're like 30 minutes late or however late we were and you being at that door expecting mercy and expecting grace because this is your church and this is your community and you're here to worship God and you'll do anything for him you even travel 45 minutes just to get here and you're rejected at the door little things like that can lead to you having a distorted view of God so nonetheless that's what I had I had a distorted view of God distorted view of Christianity of what it meant to be a Christian a distorted view on family as well because in this church the amount of time we spent here was so much that you barely saw your family if you needed if you were going to travel you kind of had to ask for permission if you could even travel like hey pastor i'm going here can i they took so much of people's money that you didn't even have money to go travel you had like it just consumed your life so i didn't really see my family as often on top of that in the church if for example like a husband starts noticing certain things that weren't right in the church they would tell their wife like hey this is not okay i don't like how the pastor is handling this or that the pastor would incentivize and like push us as the wife for example or any other family member to tell the pastor to call the pastor and be like oh like um my mom or so and so they're talking about about the church is not good and then that pastor would take it into his hands rebuke your wife your husband or whoever it is that you snitched on basically and encourage you to like divorce them encourage you to be divisive towards that person who lives in your own home using certain verses of the bible to defend his Point, right like when jesus says i didn't come to bring peace but i came as a sword to divide mother and father and stuff like that and other verses that i can include here that i completely took out of context and that was like the type of mentality that we grew up there and i say that because that was what i needed to heal from um we also were taught a very legalistic mindset very you need to do this to be right with god instead of you need to have faith in jesus and through jesus you are saved through Jesus, you have eternal life. It was a lot of fear-based tactics and fear-based preaching. Somebody found out you're sinning or you're struggling with a certain sin. You were ridiculed in front of church instead of being encouraged to get close to God. You were discouraged in a way. They also had open confessionals where the entire church would get up literally one by one and confess their sins in front of everybody and that was like a perfect opportunity right for the pastor to know oh this person is struggling with masturbation or with this one time there was a young guy that um i guess confessed or they found out like was struggling with pornography and masturbation and the pastor like said so many bad words to him like literal bad words like even calling him derogatory gay terms that's what he would use towards this member of the church and that's the type of things we had to see on a weekly basis this pastor completely talking super bad about people his own members of his church and just bringing them down that just creates in you a fear-based religion not even a relationship with god but a religion where you feel like if i don't obey or if i don't if i'm not perfect basically and i don't do what god wants like he, that's what he's gonna do he's gonna ridicule me bash me and condemn me because that's what this man would do yeah so i grew up with that and when we left that church obviously there was a lot of things i had to relearn i had to start reading the bible to understand what it means to be a christian and what it doesn't because what i was taught there wasn't what jesus taught it was a very prosperity gospel and not a loving others type of preaching a forgiving others type of preaching fast forward it's now been nine years since then and in that process i eventually started going to church with my mom me and my mom obviously because i left unwillingly it led to a little resentment within me me just rebelling a little at home not actually like fully obeying her just trying to persuade her to go back to the church even though the church obviously wasn't good but i wasn't aware of that at the time what brought this up again for me was like okay yeah i left the church i went back to a new church the church that i go to now felt so much love from people there during worship sessions in that moment where i would pray to god and I would start speaking in tongues and I would feel like God healing my heart and God molding my heart back together because you, I just saw so much bad things there that it can lead you to have a hard heart. Like I was a very prideful person and it's still something I struggle with, obviously like pride, but I didn't pray often. I didn't like make time to seek the Lord often. I thought that I was good 
but I wasn't because I wasn't praying. I wasn't making time for God, but yet somehow I felt a sense of pride of like, oh, like I don't drink, I don't smoke, like I'm a good person. Without realizing it, I was self-righteous. I didn't truly fully understand and believe that I was saved through grace by faith in Jesus, but rather through what I do or don't do. When you follow Jesus and you have faith in him and his salvation, that leads you to obey him. God died for your sins so that you could be reconciled with God the Father. What took us away from God the Father was our rebellion, our lack of repentance, our lack of humility. So when you come to Jesus and you accept him in your life, you now have the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you, who guides you to live right before God, to like obey God's commandments. Does that mean that you'll never sin? No, it means that God is perfecting you. He's making you holy through his Holy Spirit. Doesn't mean that you're gonna be perfect, but that he's doing that, right? But for me, I didn't have that mindset. I had a very legalistic mindset of like, oh, I thought I needed to be in that church to kind of be saved in a way. I thought that I was very different from other people because I was a part of this church. This church became my, my world, the church I used to go to. So like you wouldn't really interact with people who weren't a part of this church. You wouldn't really interact even with your own family. And that's the complete opposite of the gospel. Because I'm Christian, because I gave my life to Jesus does not make me better than other people. It doesn't make me on a different ranking than other people because the whole reason that I'm saved is because I acknowledged and we acknowledge that we are sinner and that we gave our life to Jesus and that without him we're nothing basically it shouldn't make me put other people who haven't accepted Jesus who haven't acknowledged that they're sinners but are sinners it doesn't create like a boundary or like a you stay over there and I stay over here no it should lead me to them because they are the ones who need Jesus right I need Jesus but you get what I'm saying like they're the ones who are sick and God came for those who are sick not for those who are healthy so as a Christian I shouldn't just spend my entire life hanging around with Christians, I should make it a mission or a goal to preach to those that are lost. Not simply hang around with those that are lost so that I can do what they do, but so that I can be a light amongst them, right? So there, there obviously needs to be a balance with that. Like it led me to put people to a side and like think that I'm different from them and I can't really hang out with this person because they're like, not christian or they're not this or whatever and how this came up again recently even though god had healed me a little and like things were going through was that one time in my church let's say this year we have this 12 hours of prayer thing where we go to church and for an hour out of those 12 let's say from 6 a.m to 6 p.m you pick an hour where you go and you worship and you pray for the specific petitions that the church lets you know about like let's pray for the church let's pray for the sick let's pray for whatever and whatever else you want you can pray for so while i was there there was a particular person that was also there who had said something that had offended me and i had reached out to that person over the phone and said hey like the way you said this offended me i didn't i wasn't gonna say anything about it but i realized that because i didn't say anything about it it was building up resentment in me and i wanted to express it to you i forgave her whatever and then since she was here after that phone call she was at this prayer event I felt my spirit like going over to her and like praying for her and like hugging her and then my mom was also there my mom was a person, right, who God used to take me out of that church. It was something very traumatizing for me, but I had never acknowledged the trauma with my mom, right? I had never acknowledged the fact that God used my mom to take me out of that place and protect me. It led to me feeling a sense of resentment of like, I never expected to leave, I never wanted to leave, but because of you, we left. Because of you, my whole life changed, that type of resentment. Instead of God used you to glorify himself, to lead me out for my protection, whatever. Like, yes, I always acknowledge that in a way, but I never acknowledged the trauma that came with it. And because of that, right, when I see my mom and she's praying and like, she's crying a lot and she's literally laying on the floor because we're feeling the presence of God and the presence of God was like intense in that room and I can't find myself with the same ease that I did to go over to that girl and pray for her and hug her I it just it just can't it didn't come as naturally for me with my mom it became a little harder for me to think of like going over to her and like hugging her and like praying for her it was hard so I in that moment I sit there and I'm just praying to God and I'm like God why is it because it's not the first time it's been hard for me to be affectionate with my mom now it's like perfectly fine because God healed me but back in the the day when we had just left the church like it was it was hard for me to like hug my mom or tell her i love you like those things were hard for me which comes from pride but also a lack of forgiveness and resentment that i wasn't aware of what happened was i pray about that and i close my eyes and when i close my eyes god takes me to a moment and answers why why am i like this towards my mom the moment he takes me to was the moment when we got we left the church i was taken back to the moment where the pastor stood my mom up in church and like publicly humiliated her. And that was the trigger that led us to be like, nope, this is not my place, this is not where we belong. And that was going on, I knew we were gonna leave the church. So I started crying. So God took me back to that moment where my mom got ridiculed in church and I just started crying. And then 
everything made sense. So I understood, okay, the reason it's hard for me to hug my mom and to be loving towards her is because I haven't let go of that moment when God used her to take us out. And then that's when the healing process started, right? I recognized I needed to forgive and I needed to let go. We leave church and I tell my mom, which is so unlike me because sometimes it's hard for me to be expressive of how I truly feel. And we left church and I was like, oh mom, like I was praying to God and asking him, why is it hard for me to be affectionate towards you and this, this and this. And God like showed me the moment when we left church and how I was crying and how that was so traumatizing for me. And I realized you know, I hadn't let it go. So when I told her, she was like, oh yeah, I knew. Like, yeah, when sometimes you get in these moods where I just tell you and I remember and I tell you like, hey, like, you need to let go of that mentality of that church. You need to let go of that mentality. Sometimes your mind goes back to that place and you start treating me in a way that's like not good. That same day, you know, by the grace of God, like we went to a mall and I was able to tell her so many things that I hadn't told her before, like things from my childhood and certain things that I just never told her because of this wall that I had built up of like, oh, I just can't trust my mom, which is crazy because she's my mom, right? But sometimes resentment is so deep that you don't even realize it, that you still love somebody, but you, you're not like as open as you probably should be with them. So I opened up with her and that wasn't it. That wasn't the end of the healing. That was the beginning of it, which was that after that, right? Uh, like a month or a few weeks after that, I had to preach at a vigil. I made a vlog where I show you guys some of that visual, but I had to preach at this vigil and I hadn't preached in a really long time. The week that I knew that I had to preach or like the weeks coming up to it, um, God gives me a dream. And in this dream, I'm at the vigil and I wasn't prepared. I didn't have a sermon prepared or anything. The, the pastor of that church tells me like, hey, come up, it's your turn. And I was so scared and I was sweating and I was like so nervous. And then I end up in somebody else's house, super nervous. I go take a shower and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I wasn't ready. I wake up and I instantly go off and pray. And I'm like, God, like I don't want to be unprepared for this visual. Guide me. So I started praying and praying and praying and asking God for direction. But then like the next week or following days, I have another dream. And in this dream, I'm in a boat. It's like a cruise but it's like a smaller smaller than a cruise and we're celebrating a little kid's birthday and i'm the one with like a little cupcake and a candle lighting it for this little boy and i look through the window and i see like waves like huge waves and i feel the boat moving so much that even though i'm dreaming i feel my stomach like you know when you're on a roller coaster and your stomach drops like that but I close my eyes as I'm holding this cupcake in front of this little boy and we're celebrating. I close my eyes and I'm like, God, you're in control. You're in control. You're in control. And then I instantly run through the cruise ship, get, cause it was like with people from church in the cruise. So I run and I get these two people. It was like a past, a pastora and somebody else who I guess was a pastor or something. Like in the midst of like the storm, they're just sitting in a rocking chair, just talking. I was like, we need to pray. And then I'm like, wait, like I know you guys are talking, like not trying to interrupt or be rude, but we need to go pray. So I get them and then we go into the middle of the cruise ship and it's like a circle of people from church and we're praying. Um, I'm holding on the hand to somebody from my church who I know and two young girls come from a different church who are like her family member. And I was like, okay, wait, do I let go of the lady from my church so that they can hold on to her because you know she knows them or should I have them stand over here like I don't want to be rude I don't want to make them feel uncomfortable and she looks at me like upset and she tells me treat them normal stop treating them differently like treat them normal because I was like overthinking like where to hold their hand and you know like kind of treating them I guess weird and for me I took that as the way I can be sometimes towards people where it's like oh like I don't know if I should hang out with this person or not if they're a good influence or not no like you know you need to be careful who you hang out with after her correct me that same lady comes towards me and she says you need to let your tongues out like in Spanish like suelta esas lenguas like she started praying for me and she was telling me like you need to speak in tongues like let it out like just speak in tongues what I know is that after I woke up I was like whoa like I think the Holy Spirit like God through this dream is telling me that I need to speak in tongues because for the last like few years or a year sometime since I had this dream I hadn't spoken in tongues in a long time because of the fact that you know i had taken that i was just like fearful of doing so because i'm like oh like the bible says like in church people can't really speak in tongues a lot or whatever you know what i'm saying like the, the verse that paul wrote like i took it to like that extent and i was like afraid of like oh like i don't want to speak in tongues like what if there's not a translator so i i've always like suppressed it for the most part um 
and I guess that comes from a legalistic mindset, obviously. Yeah, the Bible says that, but you should never prohibit people speaking in tongues. Sometime before I had this dream, I was telling her more things that like she had done that kind of didn't make me feel good, that I was expressing my forgiveness towards her about. And of course, that's always difficult. It's always difficult to have a conversation like that with your parents or with anyone because you're talking about things that happened a long time ago. You know, they're completely oblivious to these things. And then when you bring it up, it can just bring a lot of like new emotions to the surface. So I just said, okay, can you pray for me? to my mom and when she prayed for me like she prayed that what the lady said in the dream like god return to her her gift of tongue so the sunday after i have this dream of on the boat i go to church determined to like just worship god freely like okay god you told me to do this dream like to just let go of my tongues i've been struggling with unforgiveness and bitterness towards my mom that you know we've started to get through and i've started to let go of certain things but for many years because i left from that church you know i had a very self-righteous mindset it was hard for me to let go of certain things i had a very like work-based mindset like super crazy to do things in church feeling this pressure of like i have to do all these things for god and not really being careful with let's say my words like you know not having the fruits of the spirit right like peace joy love patience kindness like those are the things that i was lacking and i understood that that came from my past from the church i grew up in and for many years i had prayed to god like god please heal me god please like just help me right because it doesn't just affect the way you treat others it also affected the way i treated myself right because i had a self-righteous mindset it often led to me condemning myself me feeling really bad about myself me putting myself down me feeling like oh gosh like i made a mistake like i spoke bad to somebody or like i was just disrespectful to my mom or not honoring her the way i should and it would just lead me to to feel down and feel like i'm never gonna get better like i'm never gonna be a better person like i'm never like how is god gonna even be able to use me like i don't even want to do ministry because look like I just, I'm not perfect but it's like okay you're not perfect but Jesus is and through Jesus he made you perfect he made you right he made you just he made you right with God don't let those things stop you continue bringing those things to God and God will mold your character but don't let it inhibit you or make you think you're unworthy of God's grace even so give yourself that grace so I'm in church right worship I come ready to worship I come ready to like if I'm speaking songs I'm gonna let it out and I just wanted healing. I wanted complete healing from my past. I also had had dreams during this time of like me being in the church that I grew up in, like just sitting there. Like in my head, I'm like, why am I having dreams of that place? Like, why is it still coming up in my dreams? And it was because there were some things that I was still carrying with me from that place. I'm in church and I'm, I'm praying and I'm like, God, heal me, God, heal me. And then I start speaking in tongues, right? This is the middle of worship, right? The worshipers are like eight rows ahead of me or more. As I was praying and like, I start speaking in tongues below, like in a low voice and a low sound. Cause I didn't want, it's basically like, I just didn't want people to judge me or like people to like, look at me. For me, I just developed that fear of like, I don't want to do anything wrong. Worshiper says somebody is being healed right now. He did not hear, I don't think he heard me speaking in tongues. I don't even, like, like he just perceived that in the spirit and when he said that i was like god like is th that's me like is that me like i think that's me because that's what i'm asking for right now and then i just start speaking in tongues louder and louder and i just let it go and i just start like i do what god told me to do in the dream and i just start speaking in tongues like a lot like crazy now i'm crying and i'm like as i'm speaking in tongues i'm telling god i'm like god on the cross you took all of our sicknesses you took all of our illnesses all of our including our trauma like the wound that I feel in my heart from my past and from resentment or whatever it is, bitterness, like, I know that you two on the cross took all of our illnesses and transgressions, that being one of them, emotional illnesses, whatever it is, like, I give it to you, right? This trauma, this wound that I have, I know you can heal it. So I start speaking in tongues and telling that to God. And as I'm telling that to God, I felt in my spirit that God was telling me, and I, like, it wasn't an audible voice, but I just felt in my heart, like I was receiving peace. I was receiving healing. I just felt like God was telling me everything you feel, all the condemnation, all the shame, all the stuff that's stopping you from doing what God is telling you to do, ministry, YouTube, all that, today, it ends today it's brought to like the grave like it's it's done like it's finished literally as this is happening the pastor of my church takes the mic from the worshiper or gets another mic i don't know my eyes were closed and he just starts praying like you are healed like god heals you in this moment god heals you and i received it i received it bro i received the healing and in that moment i just had to believe like i'm healed like everything i had in my heart all the residue from my past like that's it. 
and then after church i told my mom you know our relationship has gotten a lot better like i've always had a good relationship with my mom like despite the resentment and bitterness it's been easier for me to express my love and express my gratitude and express myself like unforgiveness doesn't necessarily manifest itself as hatred towards someone in essence it kind of is hatred but it sometimes can manifest itself as indifference to people. You love someone, but it's hard for you to express that love. It's hard for you to express that affection because you have some type of wall that is also caused by pride. It doesn't necessarily have to be unforgiveness, but pride, but that doesn't allow you to express how you feel. It doesn't allow you to let the person know you love them and you affirm them for who they are. It's like hard for you to do that. And it's very hard to pinpoint why it's hard for you to do that, but it usually is unforgiveness, resentment, indifference. And indifference difference is still the opposite of love because you're not loving the person you don't care about them and yeah god healed me from that it kind of reminds me to the lady with the blood flow where because of her faith she was healed so in that moment i had to believe it i had to and not only did god do that but i also like i went to counseling in my church too to really like pinpoint or try to like resolve everything and in that my pastor who gave me counseling he said the best way to receive healing is to pray and fast because only Jesus can heal. That's what I did. Prayed fast about it and also expressed my hurt. There's so much more I could say, honestly. So if you have questions, definitely leave them down below. What I learned from this was that forgiveness isn't simply saying, oh, I'm over it and not acknowledging your pain, your hurt, your feelings the trauma that you might have gone through even without somebody realizing that they were part of that acknowledging it it confessing it it's similar to how we reconcile with god when we reconciled with god we had to confess our sins ask for forgiveness and accept jesus as our savior so i think it's similar in that you have to confess hey you hurt me you offended me whether it's directly to that person or to somebody you just gotta like let it out right because you're just leaving everything inside you're gonna explode one day and even if you don't explode today or tomorrow it's gonna come up you're gonna be angry and bitter and not realizing it and how you know if you're angry and bitter i'm gonna tell you from the abundance of the heart speaks the mouth the bible says it i'm paraphrasing it but that's what it says and i was noticing like my mouth was just complaining a lot i was just bitter a lot i was easily irritated a lot that's what led me to be like god what is wrong with me like why am i like this if from the abundance of the heart speaks the mouth why is my mouth always speaking things that aren't good you're just annoyed at everyone and everything or as particular people that's what made me realize that and now i feel completely free like i'm free through jesus christ my faith is in jesus christ it's not in myself it's not in others and since my faith is in jesus christ like i can freely forgive i can freely love i can freely express i don't know if you're going through it if there's people in your life that you might have resentment towards that you don't even realize people that you treat indifferently people who you should love and have the most love and respect for for certain things that they did when you were younger or things that they didn't even realize hurt you or words that they would say because they were angry talk about it with them and if you can't talk about it with them talk about it with god and ask god to give you the opportunity to express all that you are suppressing because part of healing is acknowledging expressing and that's something that somebody like me who i used to fear confrontation and vulnerability it was really hard to do and god i've been set free and it's been powerful i mean it's been 10 years since i left that church it's about to be 10 years i wish i didn't have to make more videos about it but for the glory of god i really want to just share with you guys like the journey there's things that you wish you could get over like that but you it's it's not that easy god helps you through it and he'll heal you through it and that's part of it and remember jesus healed a blind man and the first time he put mud on his eyes he saw but blurry couldn't see clearly and the second time god jesus touched him he could see clearly meaning that sometimes jesus has to touch you two times you have to have two encounters or multiple encounters with him to be fully healed and that's okay too and that was me <laughs> just encourage you to pray introspect god what is it that um, I might be dealing with in my heart that I'm not confessing, I'm not bringing to you, I'm not bringing to that person, I'm not forgiving. Ask Jesus to heal you. He can heal any wound. He did so on the cross. It is finished. There's no condemnation. There's no shame in Jesus Christ. So if you're feeling that, bring it to the cross. Bring it to Jesus and he will heal you. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope that was helpful. It was a lot to share. So I hope it made sense. And